So for even, we'll go even first. That means f of negative x is f of regular x. So f didn't care if x was negative or positive. It will give you the same output. So really fast example, why in the world do they call it even? The easiest even function that's not trivial is x squared. What happens if you plug in negative and square it? It's going to be positive. So here's a really fast example of even. So why do they call it even? If all the exponents are even in your polynomial, you have an even function. So it comes from the fact that just in polynomials, if all your exponents are even, you got an even function. Odd from that analogy, you could probably guess a good example for an odd function. Anybody want to be brave? X cubed. X to the first power would have worked as well, but we'll go with X cubed. So that'll be odd. Plug in negative x, you'll get your negative back out because it's an odd uh, power. So this means f of negative x is negative f of regular x. All right, so those are even odd properties. So which functions that we're using are even and odd? And how do we know? <clears throat> Here's our unit circle. We'll do cosine first. So I'm not even going to write sine theta. I just want you to think about cosine theta. What happens when, so this is theta. What happens if theta is negative? How would our angle measurement change right there? The opposite, direction. opposite direction. So we're going to go clockwise. So here we go. Try to draw the same amount but clockwise direction. And you should be right about there. So that angle will be negative theta. What can you say about the x-coordinate of those two points? It'll be exactly the same. So I can see the x-coordinate will be exactly the same. That would also work if our angle was way over here. That's a bad line. Let's pretend it's straight. Uh, if I went negative that much, I'd be right over here. So x values will be the same right there as well. So we don't need to draw those two in, but we can get right here. So normally this, I'd write this as cos negative theta, except these two are the same. So our even, I don't know what word I just wrote. It's just a warm up. Even. We have cosine of negative theta is cosine of regular theta. So cosine doesn't care which way you spin around. Because either way, you're going to start with the x value of 1, and then it's going to go towards 0 if you go around the top side. And if you go around the bottom side, it will start at 1 and go towards 0. So either way, you get the same value, as long as you travel the same amount. So the reciprocal function for cosine is secant. So 1 over cosine secant. So secant will have the same exact property. So secant negative theta equals secant regular theta. So these are our even functions right here. And let's think about sine now. Where is sine going to go when we go opposite directions? So we'll basically do the exact same thing. I'm only going to write the second coordinate. I don't really care about cosine for this part of the problem. Just want to think about sine. So here we're measuring theta and down here negative theta. So it's sine negative theta. However, what can you say about the, how do these y values relate to each other? They're similar. How do they relate? Almost. If you said additive inverse, I would say yes. And everybody else would say that's way too nerdy. <laughs> Obviously. OK. So what do we mean they're inverse? Or what do I mean additive inverse? 
they're negatives of each other. So they're, whatever the first y value is, the second one's negative that number. So I can't say same, but they are negatives of each other. So that means sine of negative theta is negative sine theta. And this, these, these are odd properties right here that we're writing down. So sine negative theta is negative sine theta. The reciprocal cosecant negative theta is negative cosecant theta. So if you're an algebra person, not a geometry person, we'll do tangent in a algebraic way. You could do tangent in a geometric way, you just have to think about y over x at the same time. So you have to keep two things in your head at the same time. Uh, we'll just go algebraic instead. So I want to know what, what is tan of negative theta? So what is it equal to? So tangent we're going to write as sine over sine negative theta over cos negative theta. So tangent sine over cosine. So I'm just putting the same angle in. So we're going to simplify this down. What is sine negative theta? Is negative sine theta. So the first the numerator is negative sine theta. Denominator cos negative theta is regular cosine theta. So that negative on cosine just disappears. Now we're going to rewrite this back into tangent. So we have negative sine over cosine, negative tan theta. So that is odd. Tangent negative theta equals negative tan theta. And cotangent, the reciprocal, has the same property. So what do you do when I write something inside of a box? Or what should you do? Memorize. So I didn't really show you why the reciprocal of a even or odd function is even or odd. Do that really, really quickly here. So I'll do really, really fast reciprocal. So if f of negative x is negative f of x, what is 1 over uh, f of negative x? <coughs> 1 over negative f of x equals negative 1 over f of x. So our reciprocal functions, if you plug in negative x, you get out, if your function was odd originally, your reciprocal function is odd as well. So an odd function, if f is odd, the reciprocal is also odd. That's what we just showed right here. So the first line, f is odd, then 1 over f is also odd. Hopefully you can see if this negative disappeared right here, if it was even, it would just be a regular f of x, and then the reciprocal would be even as well. So even works out almost exactly the same. So there's even odd, and we're going to get into more serious identities right now. So I think this is the longest chapter in the book. And I want to, even though it's the same, it's still 10-3, right? I'm going to uh, start a new page because it's going to get extremely long. So we're going to do a new page for 
So I just want to warn you, 10 three is really long, so oh, you can't even see the one for 10. Oh, there we go. So I'm just going to start a whole new page of notes here. So before we start learning a whole bunch of identities themselves, we should figure out what are identities. So identities are equations that are uh, equal for all inputs. And that's our definition. So example. So who knows a fancy C word for this factoring? Foil is an F word. <laughs> it's not a four letter C word. Nine letters? You want to buy a vowel? At the end. How about conjugate? Remember conjugates? That was too many beers ago. Okay. Conjugates. So this is A minus B, A plus B, right here. So hopefully if you foil this out, you can see that it is X squared minus four. If you know about conjugates, you can multiply this out in about two seconds. If you don't know conjugates, you gotta foil, combine like terms, et cetera, et cetera, reduce it down, and eventually be convinced they're the same thing. All right, are there any x values that these are not equal? Works for every single x value. Zero, all the positive numbers, all the negative numbers, always equal, right? So we call this identically equal. And what does that mean? Equal for all inputs. All right, so that is an identity. Another identity I can think of. Oh, complete the square. That's a fun one. So a lot of you like concrete examples. This one might take you a little longer to convince yourself they're equal. So how can you check if they're equal? We'll just manipulate the right side, foil it out. Probably your favorite F word. Eventually it'll be factor, but it might be foil for now. So now you should be convinced they're equal and equal for all X values. All right, we'll do one more example before we do a non Let's do a non-example. Is there an x value to make this true? You don't have to use much of your brain to know what it is. What do we got? Negative two, Negative two and two. Is there an x value to make this false? Oh yeah. Every number we didn't just say. So all the other numbers. So in fact, this equation is usually false, except very specifically a two and negative two. So this is definitely not an identity. So this is only equal when x equals two or x equals negative two, which means it's certainly not always equal. So it's not an identity.
All right, certainly not always equal, so it's not an identity. That's why it's not, not a non-example. <clears throat> All right, so are there any questions on the difference between an identity and just a regular equation? So identity, always the same, no matter what input you're doing. And even if, I'll do one more regular example, because you will see this a lot. So if you're good at fractions, or if you're not so good at fractions, you should be able to tell these are equal. Common denominator, subtract them. What do you have to worry a little bit about with, certain, with a certain x value? So zero is not good. What do I get if I plug in zero on the left side here? One over zero minus three, what's that? What do we call that? Undefined. Would I be divided by zero on the right side if I plug in zero? And we call that undefined. So even in this case, undefined and undefined. So they're actually undefined at the exact same x value. And they're going to be equal for all the other x values. It would be one over, or one minus zero over zero. Of the negative two? Oh, no. No, because the Yeah, they should be equal for all, for all x values. And in the case that they're undefined, they're both undefined at the exact same time. So these are equal for all x values and undefined for uh, they're undefined at exactly the same x values as well. Now, I know there's only one x value here that, that they're undefined for, but in general, there could be multiple x values in the denominator they could be undefined for, uh, which will definitely happen with our trig functions. All right, we saw our first trig identity, actually our first three trig identities. No matter what theta is, if you take sine of it, square it, cosine of it, square it, add them together, you get one. No matter where you are in the unit circle, you add it together, you're gonna get one. So that's true for all theta values you're going to get one. So here's another identity. I can write the other two Pythagorean identities here as well. So here's a time to test your memory. I'll give you a hint. The first one starts with tangent squared. So take 10 seconds, see if you can write them out. So if you couldn't write those two out, you know what you should be doing, which is memorizing them. So we have all of our even odds, our reciprocal identities. So we'll write them all down right here. So these are Pythagorean.
So we got Pythagorean, even odd, reciprocal. So we'll start with we'll go one over. Start with one over cosine is secant. So secant theta, one over cos theta. Cosecant theta, one over sine theta. Tangent theta, sine over cosine, sine theta over cos theta. And cotangent theta, one over tangent theta. Are there any more? That should be good enough. Oh, we could go cotangent cos over sine. That'll work too. So this might seem like a lot to remember. 14 things here, and some of them are pretty much repeats. So there's not that many here, and we've been going for two weeks now. So you can definitely handle memorizing this if you put the time in. So we're going to be using all this, and we're going to start off with some relatively small exercises. So our first example, simplify. So simplify is a really ambiguous instruction in math. How do you know when it's simple? You don't. Depends on who you ask as to what's simple. The good news is there's usually, you can usually tell things are getting more simple, so you at least know you're going in the right direction. All right, I want to simplify cone tangent over cosecant, and I did not just write all these down for my health. So we're going to use them. So I want to write. Cotangent over cosecant. So I'm going to pick some of these. Cotangent, cosecant. Nothing is squared, so it pretty much throws out the Pythagorean ones right there. So nothing's squared. So those are out, at least for now. Even odd. How do I know I'm not going to use even odd down here to simplify? There's no negative x's, so that's not going to be useful here. So we're pretty much down to reciprocals. So we're just going to write down cotangent and cosecant. So if I write cosecant, there's only one choice. Let's go ahead and write that one out. Cosecant is 1 over sine theta. And cotangent. Now I have two choices up here. Don't write this down. Does tangent simplify anything with, C with sine? No, it's not right away. I'd have to do another identity for tangent. So let's not go with tangent, with a 1 over tangent. So there's only one other choice, which is cos over sine. So we're going to go with the cos over sine. So what did I say about multi-story fractions? They're dangerous. Except we just created one when there wasn't really one. So probably at some point in your life, you were told not to cross the street. But if you repeated that instruction and didn't cross the street ever again, you wouldn't get very far. So at some point, you have to cross the street. So we got to go to multi-story fractions, and then we're going to go and simplify them afterwards. So we know how to deal with this. Multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Cos theta over sine theta. Oh, look at that. Finally, what happens to our sines? Sine divided by sine equals 1. So they cancel out. We have cos over 1 or just cosine theta. Now I think we can all agree that's certainly simpler than what we started with. 
So that is our simplified version right there.